Well, welcome to the Friday Devotional. John Miller here. And uh, we want you to know that uh, next week you will find this Friday video on the footprint, uh, Catalina Foothills footprint. So be looking for that next Friday. But today we are in a series and the, the overall title is Biblical Perspectives of Spiritual Growth. Biblical Perspectives of Spiritual Growth. And uh, we are looking at seven signs of Christian maturity. And this is an interesting task uh, because Christian growth uh, is, is often hard to detect in ourself because the way of growth is a growth in humility. Remember John the Baptist who was uh, who came as a forerunner uh, of Christ to point the way uh, to Jesus. And when Jesus came, he said, now I must decrease, he must increase. I want to get the spotlight off of me now that has been on me, and I want that spotlight to put fully on the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And to me, and, and uh, John the Baptist was called uh, by Jesus uh, the greatest man born of a woman. And so I look for qualities in a person who Jesus says that about, and uh, to decrease, to, that's a, a humility, that's really a servant's heart that I don't care about getting any credit at all. I want all the credit to go to Jesus Christ. And so um, part of growing in Christ is that we're probably the last one to see it. It would be others that see it show up in our life uh, because we're, we're after humbling ourselves that Christ might show up. So uh, I've given you five. Uh, signs of Christian maturity, and I, I came up with seven. So today's number six, and uh, I'll share this with you. If, and if you don't have the last five, be sure and check the last two or three videos to get those. But number five, you know when you're growing in faith. You have, you have a, a pretty good idea that something's happening inside of you when you find yourself praying for the well-being of of those who mistreat you. We all struggle with uh, degrees of, of bitterness and unforgiveness, even maybe hatred towards someone who has done us ill. And uh, the way of the kingdom is counterintuitive to the flesh so that it desires to bless those who have mistreated us. And Jesus said in six in uh, Luke 6, uh, 28, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Because at the end of the day, the heart of Jesus wishes the best uh, for these people. R remember Jesus on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. If they really understood it from a kingdom perspective, uh, they might change their mind, but they don't see it. They're lost in it. There's something about their life, whether they're an unbeliever or a believer who's mistreated us. They're missing something uh, that is so important in their life. And we desire the, the best for them. And so we want them to uh, be rescued from this way of treating other individuals, and in this case, ourselves. And we want them to experience the freedom that we have in Christ. And so we, we want them to have that blessing. In Luke 6, uh, verses 35 and 36, Jesus said this, Love your enemies, and do good to them, and lend to them, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the grateful and wicked. So he says, be, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So as children of God, we begin to take on the very heart of God for people, and even those who mistreat us, because God is merciful, we are going to choose to be merciful. Um, because God uh, is, is very gracious, 
uh, to the unkind, we ourselves uh, uh, begin to exude that same spirit. And so the one who, remember the Roman soldier who, who says, uh, you have to go with me one mile because that was part of the rules, the Roman rules of the day uh, as the, the Jews were under the thumb of Rome at that time. And Jesus says, okay, not only go one mile, go more than that, double, double it up. That is the thinking of the kingdom of God. That kind of thinking uh, is going to lead people ultimately to Jesus. Not everybody, but they're going to see something in you and me that is not natural. It's supernatural. So look for those people in your life this week or that have been in your life for some time that you've had a really hard time with and say, Lord, how, how do I live out these verses? How do I live out this truth? And how can I do it in such a way that it really expresses uh, the Jesus in me, that my, my true heart, my true new nature? And remember, we have a flesh, so we'll kick against that and resist that. But I think that we need to open that up and, and allow Jesus to increase in our life and self to decrease. So I hope that will be helpful and we can all live that out this week and beyond. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.